Hi guys, this is Jason here from Nathaniel. In this lesson, we are basically going to address a problem which most musicians face, especially these days with the pandemic situation. You have to kind of do most of your work from home and on your own because especially in India, no one really meets each other these days because of the situation. So uh, inevitably, musicians have to manage audio. We have to figure out how to record our stuff uh, in our bedrooms or in our so-called little home studios as what I have as well. Uh, and also inevitably, we have to handle video, right? So video is something which is a obviously a very deep subject and I am nowhere close to be able to explaining anything about video and how to shoot it and how to color correct it and whatnot. But here's a tip and I think something which all musicians need to learn in order to sort of survive in today's day and age because you're creating all your content from home or in your home setup or in your home space and uh, all music ultimately needs to be seen by people be it on instagram be it on youtube or some release platform these days you have to you know tag your audio content with your video content so the standard problem we face as musicians at least for me the biggest problem which i face is syncing and that's something you can see really clearly because as a musician, you kind of know when some, you at least know when that element of uh, video is um, messed up, you know, because you see your, yourself playing a chord on the guitar and it just doesn't look good when it sounds the way you want it, it to sound. So syncing is something I'm going to address in this lesson and I'm going to show you a couple of softwares which I use and um, hopefully you can take something out of it and uh, I'm trying to make it as scalable as possible. So the softwares I'm using could be, you know, for both Mac and Windows. So it depends on what you use. And I'll just explain the workflow right now. Right now is I'm a piano player. So I make these things called riffs, which are short pieces of music. As you can see, this is the audio of the riff. All this stuff is the audio. And then I have collaborated with a musician friend who in this instance is playing the flute. So this musician would have played the flute over some of these riffs and then we have a few videos so this is my top angle video as you can see very average video recording is just done using a simple iphone iphone 7 or something which is an old one and then we just use a screen grabbing software and since I'm a teacher, I want to record my screen where I have this MIDI app uh, called Cordy where I kind of uh, capture that and then show it from the point of view of teaching. So I have a screen capture angle which I use with my MIDI notes, if you will. Then I have a top angle and I could have had a face angle, but you know, it was tough. So I, I just stuck with the top angle. And uh, the other reason being we have a flute angle which is which is again done with uh, Arjun's uh, setup, which is again a simple phone, phone setup. But if you observe the sound of each audio from each uh, video capture source is very different, isn't it? This has a metronome. And if you can hear this, there's a lot of me talking. There's very less of the piano. You can barely hear it. And there's a lot of my finger noise. While in Arjun's uh, flute recording, there's a lot of metronome, right? So this is what he's using to either record the video or record the audio or maybe both. Maybe he's doing it at the same time or maybe he's shooting the video after he's finished piecing the audio, right? So that is subjective. That's how you would like to go about the process. So just to recap, I have the uh, screen capture angle. I have the top piano angle and I have the flute angle wherever need be. And then finally, my department or the musician's department is, of course, audio, where we try to be as professional as possible. So as you can hear, you'll find a track. 
So this has been produced, mixed, engineered, mastered as best as we can because as musicians, that's something you know. So this video, as I said earlier, is about syncing. So our goal is to sync all of this together and a very important thing for me is being a musician, I don't want to spend all, a, any time figuring out how to sync, how to drag stuff in and out and, you know, those sort of things. So I, I wanted an app which does this really well for me and I currently use this thing called Pluralize 4 by the company Red Giant and uh, we leave a, a link in the description, you can check it out. So I've just found this app, it works really well for me and I've compared it with the default versions, you know, of Final Cut Pro. Final Cut Pro has a sync feature which, to be honest, doesn't work for music. It, it's really bad with music. I've had horrible results. You may argue frame rate, set this, set that, but I mean, it just doesn't work, you know, and as musicians, we don't want to get into the video department too much. So this is a software which really works. And if you're a musician who uses maybe one DSLR camera because you can't afford a big rig and you have one a cell phone, maybe a couple of cell phones, and that's how you want to shoot. You want to collaborate with friends or you want to do like a virtual choir thing, you know, that seems to be going on very often these days with the everyone's at home, you know. So you get all the footage together. So this is a lot of clips. This is the audio. And then you drag it into Pluralize. It does its thing. It says preparing media to synchronize. Does that really fast. And it says 16 clips ready to synchronize. And here's where the magic happens. Right? You hit the sync button. And I'll just show you what it's doing. It takes, as you can see, not too much time. Rather, it's crazy time you see what it's doing it's created some sort of tracks as I call it from an audio background and then it kind of identifies what is what so if you just hit this media button you'll see that this is the uh, the screen capture thing video this is my top piano angle this is the flute angle right and it has all been synced with each other and this is my audio, my main audio, which doesn't have a video. So it has synced everything either to this or to each other. I have no idea about the process. You'll have to go to the, you know, when you, if you want, you can research that. But all I know is when this goes blue, when everything is blue, it means everything is synced and it says 16 out of 16 clips are synchronized. So that's a great feeling for me because I know it's going, that would have saved me a long, long time. And like I said, if I had to move this into FCP or Final Cut Pro or any of these other softwares out there, it either takes a hell of a lot of time to sync or else the sync is horribly inaccurate to a point that it just does something. It creates a synchronized clip or something and you waste all that time, all that uh, hard disk space and then it's all it all sucks, right? It doesn't work. So this is a software which works really well and they haven't even upgraded it for a few years. They're very happy with the way it works, I guess. It's been on version 4 for a while now. So what's cool is you then export timeline and you can, you know, save to file. You can name the file. I am just going to call it something uh, May 22nd riffs. So this is creating an FCP XML file. That means you can load this into Final Cut Pro. So this thing is actually even creating a project for you, right? You don't have to make new project. You don't have to do all that stuff. And if you choose export format here, you can choose Final Cut Pro X. You can choose other uh, famous video recording or video editing softwares like Premiere Pro, DaVinci, or you can even render individual video files, which is also cool. So it'll render it file by file synced with the original source wave audio. So if ever you want to do that and then work on it or send it to someone else who's a professional video editor, like so, like I do sometimes, you could. Right now I'm doing this edit on my own. So Final Cut Pro X, I want to name it something. So let me name it May 22nd again because it is May 22nd when we're shooting this. And you tick this button. 
import automatically into FCP X. Of course, FCP, which is Final Cut Pro, should be running at the time, obviously. And then you hit export and even more magic seems to happen. There's a nice beep there. You can create a new, um, what do you call it? Uh, whatever, library as it's called in Final Cut. 22nd May 2021, naming it by date. And then it all comes in, right? And you double click and here you go. So just to show you, I'm just going to move all this out of the timeline. Lift from timeline, I guess they call it. And let me go to a place where Arjun has played and all of us have played. Um, this, So this is the main audio. Okay, and you see it's made the tracks in FCP part by part. So if I just mute everything, hitting the V key, let's see how the flute lines up. See even the metronomes lining. Lines up quite well. So let's bring the flute later. Let's try the uh, uh, the screen grab angle. So it sounds a bit weird, right? It sounds like there's a lag, but if I mute this audio, it's perfect. I mean, it can't get better than that. And then if I go the top angle, right? Let me try and rotate this top angle by 90 degrees so that you can see some of it. Again, apologies for my uh, sh shabby video editing skills. I'm just using a basic iPhone with a top angle. There we go. It's perfect. It's like really perfect. I, I mean, I, I just wish it could have been shot better. So maybe I need to learn uh, more of video shooting, you know. But nevertheless, it, it gets the job done. I can now give this out to anyone. I can, I can render it myself. I can do a little bit of color, a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, angle checking and, you know, b basic stuff here and there. And uh, I can render this stuff out. So let's also assume maybe you don't have, you know, a, a, a software like Pluralize to do the job for you. I'm going to, let's try and sync even manually and see if manual syncing is possible. So I'm just going to delete Arjun's flute video or, and I'll delete his video here also and try to import it. So even if you do not have a software like Pluralize, there's a simple trick which we could follow, you know, to sync manually, even if you don't have a, you know, this is a paid software, it costs a little bit of money. So if you do not have the budget for this, you can even do it manually, you import all your clips into the project. And um, now I'm just going to work with only the flute. Let's say the flute has not yet been imported. So I need this to come somewhere here and I need this to come somewhere here. Now clearly by dragging and dropping, it's not going to magically be in sync. So here's what I do. I figure out where he's going to start playing. And here's where our knowledge of being musicians helps and uh, recording on click, counting, ability to feel the pulse, you know. So if I play this back, I know where Arjun's coming, not here, little fast forward, so one, two, three, four, bang. So that's my one of the bar where he enters, right? So I've put a marker there. In FCP, you hit M. I guess in most video softwares, M will make you like a marker. So you see what it did there, right? It creates a point. There we go. So I put up M a point there. And what's nice about it is this timeline, you see, it magnetically locks to that marker, which is really cool. And for that, you need to turn snapping on, which in FCP is here, and you hit N to snap, to, to enable that or disable that. Now, here's the trick. You don't need a syncing software now. You can mute this for a quick moment, figure out when the one of the bar is when the flautist enters. One, two, three, go, one. 
So I've got the two ones together. What do I do? Just drag it and see how they lock. The markers will just interlock with each other. Then I just mute that audio because it's I know it's going to be fairly in sync. Bring back the original audio. I'm hitting V to bring it to hide the uh, hide the video or audio and bring back or show or hear the audio in this case. Hopefully things are in sync now. Looks fairly in sync. In fact, if I open the audio a little bit, you can obviously move it or fine tune it a little bit using the comma key. You see it moves a little or the point key or the full stop key. Right guys, so this is basically how we sync. So in conclusion, you take this app, pluralize, you keep it opened, um, check it out, try it out and see if it works for you. And this will be really helpful. Imagine if this is audio coming from like a million people, you know, you want to do a virtual choir with 60, 70 voices, and you want to put that fancy, you know, many videos in one kind of a thing. The the creativity with video editing will be where you place everything, I guess, how you, you know, creatively put your, you know, your color grading and those sort of things. So uh, hopefully this video will help you save the time to actually focus on the creative part. Syncing and the technical stuff, trust me, as you can see right now, was just a click away. You just took all these clips, put it in here and it works. Now, uh, an inbuilt video editing software like Final Cut Pro may also have syncing capabilities, but then you have to import everything into this and then select everything, sync it one by one to each clip. And um, then it creates a synchronized clip and nine out of 10 times with the work I do, it's a complete failure. So I would not recommend uh, video software's inbuilt syncing. Either you use something like a Pluralize, which is uh, paid, but it's a one-time investment and it really works. I've just showed you right now in this lesson, everything was pretty much live. You saw the speed at which it does it. And then the icing on the cake is you can send it to FCP with a project and uh, everything's named and are aligned well and uh, what not i mean all you have to do now is do your edit and render right so this will also help when you're working with lot of material like in my case i had i did 10 riffs this is 10 pieces of music and i'm uh, working with all the uh, videos and audios for all 10 in one fcp timeline which i think that's the way i work so it helps i don't have to keep finding new projects and whatever else. When I'm done with this, I'll just back it up or delete it, upload it to YouTube. And once it's uploaded, job done, maybe back it up on the cloud somewhere. Right, guys. Again, this is Jason from Nathaniel. Hope you found the lesson useful. And if you have, do not forget to subscribe to our channel, like the video, share the video, leave a comment with something else you'd like to learn. I know this is a primarily a music theory slash piano, bass, guitar kind of channel, but, uh, this is something musicians in today's world will need to learn. And I would highly encourage you to do it. You can share your music with a lot more people, you know, by learning a little bit of video and syncing and also collaborate with a lot more people whose sole job from their end will be just to record the data from their house and uh, give it to you. You don't have to tell them how should you record it. They record it how they want and give it to you and, uh, these days, phones are quite decent, uh, I guess. So you don't have to worry too much and uh, so on and so forth. Cheers again. Catch you in the next one. Bye.